talking about the business of fun, right? So that's exciting. And I hope today that as I speak, that you guys will be able to relate with me because I'm not that much older than a lot of you in this room. And so all the, the challenges that I had trying to start a business and get it going are the same things that many of you are probably <laughs> going to go through. So hopefully as I go through this, I'm gonna, I tried to take it from like the perspective of a student and how you can make it work. Uh, just a, cre- a, a, a brief introduction. I live here in, in Provo, Utah. I grew up in Southern California. Uh, came here, um, went to school two years at Timview. Uh, went here to BYU, served a mission in, in uh, Tampa, Florida. Um, been living in, in California for a little while and came back. Um, over the last number of years, we had seven locations. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that story that I had. Um, first off, I want everybody to really understand how fortunate you are to be in this classroom. When I, was, when I was a freshman here at BYU, this was my very, very favorite class by far. And I love this class so much that I based my entire schedule at BYU on this class. When, I don't know how they do it now, but there was, there was a speaker that would come on Monday and there was a speaker would come on Tuesday. And I would go to each one of those classes and then they would have a luncheon. And I don't know if they still do that, but we got a free lunch and we'd sit down with these entrepreneurs and we'd listen to them talk. And it was really cool because it was a free lunch and there was hardly anybody there. It was just like a few people. And so we'd talk to these guys and I got to ask all these questions and questions and questions. And I start to listen to these entrepreneurs and these people. And very soon I thought I was thinking a lot like them. And I said, you know what? I can do this stuff. I can make these things work. Um, and so that's what I did. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about is kind of the beginning. When I, was, when I was in high school, I took a personal finance class. And uh, we had to make a little uh, budget of what it would be like when we actually graduated from, from college. So I did this exercise. And I wrote down, you know, how much is it going to cost to buy a house? How much is it going to cost to get insurance, to buy cars, kids, college, all this kind of stuff. And by the end of this, ex- this little experiment that we did, I realized, oh my goodness, it is going to be so expensive out there. I need to be able to figure a way to have an income so that I can take care of my family. We got light, great. Um, so, so this was like a really big awakening for me because I figured, okay, I got I to gotta clamp her down. I got to figure out what I'm going to do in life and make, to make an income. So I started working really hard when I was in high school. And I got good grades, which I'm sure all of you did. And I was feeling pretty good. Things were going well. And then I came here to BYU. And uh, I realized, whoa, wait a second. I'm not the smartest kid anymore. I don't have all the answers. All these people that are sitting around me, they're so much brighter than me. And I, and I felt just like, like nothing was going to work. I thought, you know what? Maybe I'll be a doctor or an attorney and all this. And all these dreams that I had, psh- there's no way I was going to do that. When I started taking these classes, the generals, you know, I was like, economics? Yeah, this is great. And then I took it and I was like, whoa, wait a second. I don't know that I, I'm a, I should be a business person. But then I took this class. And when I took this class, I realized some really, really important things. That you don't have to be the brightest. You don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to have 4.0. But you can get people that have great ideas. You can see what other people are doing, and you can put all these things together, and you can, you can even copy other people, and you can create really great businesses. And so that's kind of what I decided that I wanted to do. I, uh, I was one of those people, I always like to set goals. And I like to kind of figure out you know, what, what I'm going to do and how it's going to work. So when I, was, when I was here at BYU taking these classes and meeting with all these entrepreneurs, I got all their business cards. And I got all this information, and I thought, you know what? When it's ready to, to, ready, ready to start a business, I have all these people that I could go after and get money from them if I needed to. It'd be perfect. I just had to come up with some kind of idea or something that, uh, that would work. Well, like I said, when, when I was here, I realized very quickly that, that entrepreneurship was what I wanted to do. 
Um, and I know a lot of you in this room might be f other fields other than business. And that's great. That's awesome. I was, I was a recreation management major. Any rec recreation management majors? All right. Yeah, that's exciting. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with that, but, but I thought that I could do that. So anyway, um, BYU really gave me the, the opportunities to, to grow. When I, was, uh, when I was here, I was involved in the Student Entrepreneur of the Year competition, uh, and I got second place in that, and I was really, really excited. Um, but so when, when I was here at BYU, I was trying to, trying to kind of figure out what I wanted to do in business. I didn't know what. I just knew I really liked it, and I got really excited every time I'd listen to different speakers come. But I just got had to kind of figure it all out. So anyway, when I was, when I was, uh, see, this was my my junior year when I was here at BYU. At the time, I was I was trying to to make a little bit of money, and uh, I would actually sit at a computer during the day and I would trade stocks. And I would do my, I'd, I'd be in the computer lab and I'd, I'd be on those computers. Everybody didn't have computers. And so I would, I, would, I would start trading stocks and I'd be doing my homework and doing all this, trying to, trying to make a little bit of money. And uh, then guess what happened? The market just started, started to go crazy. And so I said, okay, I gotta, I gotta change gears. I gotta figure out something that's gonna, there's something else that I can do, because this obviously wasn't working really well. So I knew I wanted to do business. I knew that I, I, th I thought I could. It made sense for me. And so I started looking in the newspaper. I was looking for businesses, businesses that, that I could buy. It wouldn't cost a whole lot of money, but something that I could, that I could buy and, and try. And so uh, one day... Uh, actually, my dad, he found uh, a, an ad in the paper for an arcade that was for sale. And uh, I said, yeah, that, that sounds interesting. That sounds kind of neat. So uh, we went to the location. It was called the Nickel Cade. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've been there before. That's kind of neat. That's kind of different. I like it. And, and I said, yeah, I want to do this. This is great. So... Uh, so I took the money that I had from the stock market. I got some money from my family, and I, and I purchased this business. All right? So everything's going great. My junior year, I, I'm buying a business, kind of you know, trying to prepare for a future, trying to figure something I can do. It's like an arcade. That, that makes sense. I, I understand that, that, that concept is something I can put my, my hands around. And then, you know the expression, open up like a can of worms? Yeah, that's kind of what happened to me. Well, the first day I went to work, I uh, was having some meeting with some vendors trying to set up accounts. And I went back, and I was meeting, and then I came back out. I was starting to look for my manager. It was the manager of the store. Where is he? Gone completely gone. I was like, Who, who's in charge of the store? Nobody's here. And then I saw a note on the register that said, I quit. Great, great. Okay, that's all right. No problem. I don't have a manager. Oh, okay. There's some employees here. They, they know what they're doing. So I, so I met with the employees, talked to them. They didn't know anything. A lot of them had just been hired. They didn't know how to fix a thing in the store. So I was like, okay, so I got no employees, that's all right. But I got games, right? People want to play games, perfect. Guess what? The games, they all started breaking. Nothing was working. It was driving me crazy. And so when I, when I bought the business, the owner said, okay, you're going to get 40 hours of training. Or, you know, you can use our technician for those hours too. So... The, um, the, uh, the owner said that, and I thought that was all great and fine, but I realized that I had to spend these hours that I had fixing this equipment because I had no idea how to make things work. So, uh, so, we, so we did that, and all the, all the 40 hours that I had in training all went to repair equipment. 
So now I had a business that had no employees, the games weren't working, and I had no training. Perfect. We're off to a really good start, right? So now let's think back how you guys are. Okay, I was a junior. I was going to school. I was trying to do really well, trying to get good grades. I was trying to have somewhat of a social life. I had leadership responsibilities in, in the ward that I was in. I was hoping that maybe somebody would actually want to marry me someday. Tried to, this dating thing. And then I had this business. Man, I was like so tired. I was so exhausted. And it was so hard for me. And, and I remember, I remember nights when I would come home after I was working. And I would just, just sob. I just break down and start crying in my pillow. I just couldn't, I couldn't figure this out. I'd spent all this money on this business and invested all this time, and, and it just wasn't working out. And I was so discouraged. And it was so hard. And, and I was saying to myself, you know what? I can't do this. It's too hard. It's way too hard. There's too much going on. I can't, I can't manage everything. And luckily, I had really good parents. And they were very, very encouraging. And they said, Dan, don't worry. Things are going to work out. You're going to get through it. It's OK. And I said, no, I, I, I can't do this. It's, it's, it's too much. I said, you know what? We need to sell the business. We need to sell it. And this had been going for, for about a year or so. And so I, I went to uh, the entrepreneurship department. They had some professors. They said you could meet with, and you could talk about how to grow your business, how to make it better. And so I went to Jerry Nelson. I don't know if any of you know who he is. And, and, I, and I knocked on his door and came in, and I said, Jerry, how do you sell a business? And he said, what? How do you sell a business? And it's funny. I ran into him a couple months ago, and he says, you're the only, person, only student at BYU that ever came in and said, how do you sell a business? It's always, how do you start a business? So... So I came in there, and he says, well, okay, you want to sell it. Why do you want to sell it? And I kind of went through a little of it. He says, okay, well, let, let's hold on a second. Let's, let's, kind of, let's kind of think about, you know, let's look at the numbers. Let's figure them out. Let's look at this. And so we went through this whole process of trying to figure things out. And then he said, Dan, he goes, why are you selling the business? And I said, I told you why I'm selling the business. And he said, you're making so much money. And I was like, oh, yeah, we're, we're doing okay. Like, we're, we're, we're managing. We're, 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 it's, it's okay. But, but at the same time, I just couldn't handle it. It wasn't, it wasn't about the actual money. It was about doing the business and making it run and everything. So we tried to, we tried to sell the business. It wasn't a very, uh, it wasn't a very successful attempt. It didn't, uh, it didn't work out, which was really, really great. You know, and I'm going to talk about some things that I think are really important keys to learn. And, and one of those is that. So anyway, the business didn't sell. I kept pushing along, trying to figure this whole thing out. And then a really great thing happened. I graduated from BYU. <laughs> all right? Now, you think, why is that a great thing? Well, for the first time in my life, I actually had time. I had time that I could really focus on something and work on it. And so I started to do that. And little by little, things started to get a little bit better. And then I started to travel places and take classes on, on electronics and how to fix circuit boards and how to do all this kind of stuff that I had no idea what I was doing. So anyway, we, we, we made progress. I went around. I went to different facilities around the country. And I took notes. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's a really great idea. Oh, I, I, should, I should use that. And then I saw something, oh, look at the way they do this. And I started taking notes, and things started getting better, and I, and I felt a little bit more confident. Well, one day I had a, a business broker contact me, and he said, there's an opportunity in, in California. How many of you are from California? Wow, we got a lot. Great. And uh, he said, there's, there's a business similar to yours. 
and why don't you come down and take a look at it? So I did. So I, so I came down in California, and I started going to all these stores, looking at them, and I was doing the same thing, taking all these notes, and where do you get this, and how do you buy that, and how's this done, and trying to figure this out, and trying to somehow put some kind of offer together that could, that could purchase this business and grow it, because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to grow and make it bigger. And so when I was out there, we did all this work, did a lot of homework, tried to crunch the numbers, and guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. It didn't work. It failed. We didn't buy the business. It's like it's, if, you, if you realize this theme, things are going, and then they don't work out. Things keep going, they don't work out. Things keep going, they don't work out. But you keep going on. When I was in California, looking at all these stores and just kind of traveling around and figuring out where I was, I saw, I saw a store that said closed. And it was an arcade that had failed. And, and I looked in the window and I, I saw those games that were in there and I said, hmm, what if, what, if we, what if we took those games and we put them somewhere else? Somewhere that didn't have them. And we, we, did, we kind of changed our concept. The, the, the original like, concept from tokens to nickels. And so, so that's what we did. So I called, it was a Japanese company, and I said, I, I want to purchase your games if they're for sale. I didn't even know if they were for sale, and they said, yeah, great. So, so we, we worked on that. We got the games, moved them to Utah, did another location. And then they called and said, guess what? We got other locations. Are you interested? Yeah, I'm interested for sure, definitely. So... So they, they told me about these other locations, and there was other people that were bidding on them. And so we bought some other locations and bought games and moved things around, and things started to, started to work out. We were able to take a lot of these locations that had done really, really lousy and hopefully taken some of the things that we had learned and made them a little bit better and made them work. Well, when I was at, in these classes... Um, there were a lot of speakers, and, and, I, and I took down the I still have the notes from this class, by the way. I still have all those business cards. And uh, I, remember, I remember something that one of the speakers said. And I think it was actually Josh James, who uh, was, was uh, involved with um, Omniture and Adobe and all that. But anyway, he, he had said something, you know, when, if, you, if you're willing to work really, really hard, like, nobody is willing to work for the first 10 years of your life. You can live how nobody's able to live the rest of your life. And, and that, that, that kind of saying, that thought really impressed me. And I thought, you know what? Why, why, are we, why are we always working, 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 working? All we ever do is work. And most of the people that I talk to hate going to work. They hate what they do yet they do it all their lives. Is there a better way? Is there, is there a way that we can make this more efficient? And, and so I said, you know what, I'm, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to work really hard. And so I, I set the goal. I said when I, when I was 30 years old, I'm 33 right now, I said, you know what, I want to be able to retire. I want to be able to have enough in savings that I can be able to retire, enjoy the great life, do whatever I want, travel, whatever. My wife's probably laughing. She's in the back. She knows I'm not a big traveler. But anyway, that was my goal. So when I turned 30, I decided, okay, we're going to sell the stores. And, and we did that. Guess what? I took a bunch of time off, and it was terrible. Terrible. My whole life, I thought it was all about retirement. It was all about the good life, being on the beach, sipping pina colada. Non-alcoholic, of course, right? But, but that was kind of impressed upon my mind. That was how it was. And I realized when I had this time off that it was miserable. I was so used to always working and doing these things. And I, and I realized, you know what? I had a lot, of, I had a lot of, of, of fun doing it. It was enjoyable. I liked doing this work. And so, actually, this is a true story. After, after I retired, you know, one of the first things... I did after I kind of took a little break. You're going to laugh at this. I got a minimum wage job at Chuck E. Cheese. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I got a job at Chuck E. Cheese. So I, I had, I went to this store, and the guy's like, okay, do you have any experience? Yeah, yeah, I got a little bit of experience, you know. And so I, was, I went to them. I, I mean, I didn't have to work. I had made enough money, but I wanted to go there, and I said, okay. I started this backwards. I said, in the beginning, I had no experience, and so I had to learn everything myself. And so now I had this time, and I said, well, let's, let's get in one of these companies and let's learn how they're doing it, figure out if they have something that's right or something that's wrong, and let's take what I learned. And so that's what I did. Well, a few years ago, um, the store here in Orm, uh, I took control of that over again, and then I, uh, I moved the location to, uh, to here in, uh, in Orm with uh, some family members, and, and that's what we're running right now. Um, so that's kind of a little bit about my background and how I got started. How many of you have been to Nickel City? Raise your hand. How many of you have not? Wow, that's pretty good. I thought nobody have gone, would have gone. Okay. Um, so basically what it is, just so you know, it's an arcade, but we charge an admission fee to get in, and then once you get in, the games operate on nickels. And we have pizza and laser tag. You can do birthday parties, and it's really, really, really fun. I hope. I hope you guys have a good time there. But anyway, that, that's, so that's the business. So, so that's kind of how, how I got started. Um, and so what I want to talk about are some, I would, there's 10 things that I think are really important that we need to remember if you guys want to go out, start businesses, do things. The first thing that I believe is focus. Focus, 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 focus. Specialize. Learn something and learn it really well. When I was starting, just in the beginning, I would go to these trade shows, and I was the youngest person there. Everybody was older than me. They were 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old guys. And I would just start asking questions and trying to figure things out and doing all this. And I would just study, and I would study, and I would study, and I would go all over the place and try and figure out how in the world can I buy all this really expensive equipment at low prices? How can I get supplies lower? And I just started studying, how can you repair this stuff, and asking questions. And I formed a lot of relationships with different operators throughout the country. And then a funny thing happened, after, after I'd done this for a while, I realized I knew way more than these guys that were in the industry. And so it was because I really focused on what I was doing. Sometimes it's good to have those blinders on. Sometimes you need to remember there's other things in your life that are important. But when you're working on your business and you're trying to get it going, it's important that you focus on that thing. The second thing, and this is, I'm a big, I'm really big into this. And there's nothing wrong about starting a business. That's great, but I love existing businesses. Why do I love existing businesses? Because I don't like to take a lot of risk. I don't want to lose my money. And you're not always going to lose your money, but I like something that's already going. I can look at its historical records. I can see if there's managers in place. Hopefully, they're not going to leave you the next day. But you can have some kind of basis to know what to go from. For example, say I, say I want to start a business. Say it costs 100 grand. Okay. So I, I work on that business. I put 100 grand in. After the first year, I make $20,000. Next year, I make $40,000. Next year, I make $60,000. And I spent all this time to get my business up to where it's going. I can take a business that's already existing, and I'm going to pay a little bit of a multiple for it, but I already have it going, and I don't have to take all that risk. And that, that to me, is, is really big. Nothing wrong with starting a business. It's great. That's why we're here, the entrepreneurship department, starting things, beginning things. My, my past is I, I'd rather do things that are already existing. The next thing, and this is probably one of, this is the most important thing. And I'm glad that we're here at BYU because all the things that I have been blessed with have all been because of the Lord. He has helped me countless and countless and countless times. And as you read in the scriptures, it talks about praying over your fields, <coughs> praying over those things that are in your life that are important. 
Yes, we need to be able to remember those things that are spiritual in our lives. Yes, it's important that we take care of our families and these things. But some of the temporal needs that we need, we can ask for that assistance from the Lord. He doesn't care if we're millionaires. He doesn't care the possessions, the things that we have. But he's there to help us and he's there to bless us. And I can tell you, of all the, all the things that I've been able to, to go through that were tough, I always relied upon the Lord. And he always was there for me to help me. And it's really important that as you're starting your businesses and doing these kinds of ventures that you rely upon him and that you ask for his help. I always pray for his, his assistance and guidance. And if you do that, he will bless you and he will help you. So always remember that it's the Lord that gives you these things. These are blessings that come from him. Yes, we're, some of us were able to be blessed with, with things, but they all are from him. We always need to remember the source of those blessings. Fourth, frugality. If you were to ask my, my family members if, if I was frugal, they would probably actually laugh at you. They would say, frugal? You don't even know what frugal is till you've met me, is what they would probably say. When I, when I was starting here at BYU, doing my business, I, uh, I was making a pretty good, I was making a six-figure income, a really good one. And I probably lived in, no, actually, I know I lived in the most, the least expensive apartment when I was here at BYU. No questions about that. The car that I drive today, I still drive the car that I have in high school. Yeah, you could buy a Ferrari, you could buy anything out there, but I don't really need it. I don't, some people want things. But the point is, is that when you learn to be frugal, when you learn to do without a lot of things, it will help you in your business. When I, was, when I was going from Utah and back to California, I'd take the Greyhound bus. I'd get my computer out and I'd be doing work while I'd travel just to save some extra dollars. When I, when I was opening up locations, I literally lived in a location for a month. People that I was working with always joke about this, but we would we'd go to a hotel every like five days. This is not the most uh, hygienically uh, the best thing to do, but but and take showers and everything, but we were there to work because I, I was trying to save money. I was trying to be able to, to pay for these things. And the thing that was kind of neat later on when we were buying other, other equipment and businesses is that all these other people in the industry were financing everything and they didn't have money to do these things. And everything that we did, we did with cash that we had on hand. We didn't have any debt. And so we could make these transactions really fast where we'd come in and say, Okay, you have all the you have a store full of stuff. We'll come in. We'll buy everything right away, and you don't have to worry about all these other turkeys trying to raise money to to, to pay for this stuff. And it really helped us in the end. Um, the next thing is is to get involved. Whatever you guys do, get involved in it. If you're here at BYU, go to the devotionals. Get to know your professors. Be involved in clubs. When you have church callings, do them the best of your ability. Don't just take this, this kind of, I'm um, kind of halfway on the fence measure, eh, I'm just kind of getting by school. When you do stuff, get into it. Learn to go the extra mile. And you'll learn that if you can develop a lot of these qualities in your life, all these things are going to go with you when you decide or if you decide to, to start businesses or careers or families or whatever, always, always try to get involved. Let, let people know that you're interested and that you care. It'll, it'll definitely, definitely help you. Um, the next thing, and it's, it's to always look for problems. Always look for problems. If you look at the people that start businesses and that succeed, those are the people that find answers to problems. People always come up and they always say, you know what, I want to start a business. I definitely want to start a business. I want to be an entrepreneur. But I don't know what to do. I, I have no idea. I, I, I just, yeah, I don't know. And that happens all the time. All you need to do is walk around and see where are all the problems. And if you can find the problems, come up with the solution, price it right, and sell it. It's really not that hard. There's so many. I, I could tell you, 
in, in the construction industry, for example, we had some work done on our house. Can I tell you the number of people that came to, came to do work on time? Like, that never happened. People that came into the house that, like, actually, like, took their shoes off were clean when they did work. Yeah, that hardly ever happened. People that actually, like, okay, the project's done. Is it what you like? There's, there's so much opportunity out there to find things that are kind of bad and to fix them, make them better. You know, with the, with the concept of our business, the nickel concept, everybody was always used to tokens, quarters, all those kind of things. And like I said, when I was young, I loved to go to the arcade with my family. It was so much fun. I, when there were birthday parties, I would get so excited about that. But we just didn't have a lot of money, and it just didn't last very long, you know? So how do you solve that? Make the games cost less. More, maybe more people will come. It worked out. So, so look for problems. Once you find those problems, you'll find answers, and then you'll be able to, to profit from them. The next one, I kind of talked about this. It's never stop learning. You guys are here at BYU. You're learning. Once you graduate, that's not the end. The thing that's kind of crazy about right now is technology is just changing and changing and changing and changing. I always wanted to like get to a point where it's like, okay, great, everything's perfect. We can just put the auto cruise button on and slide on through. It doesn't work that way. Man, everybody's trying to fight for the same space. Everybody's trying to get ahead. And so you need to be able to adapt. And the only way to do that is by continually learning and learning. I always am reading trade magazines. I'm going to all the different trade shows. I'm trying to do whatever I can to stay up and know what's going on. Because if you don't, the sad thing is somebody, somebody else is going to do that. The next thing is to ask for help. A lot of people just kind of assume that they have all the answers. And I know when I started, I kind of thought I had a lot of the answers. I was like, you know what, this business thing, I can figure this out. But I realized really quick that I did not know anything. When I was at BYU, I, I audited a lot of the business classes because I wanted to learn. And I felt like, yeah, I got a pretty good understanding for business. And then you get out there and you're like, uh, how do you program a register? Nobody taught me how to do that. How do you prevent like somebody from stealing? How, how do you do that? I didn't have any classes on theft. And, and there's all these things out there and you're like, oh my goodness. You gotta continually learn and let know what's going on. Um, and the only way to do that is by asking questions. There's so many professors here in, in group settings where you can go to them and say, look, I got a business, this is my idea. Is this gonna work? Is this not gonna work? What do you think? Am I going in the right directions? And they'll help. And the thing that's really, really awesome about everybody in here is that your students, since nobody takes you seriously. People that once they start in the business field and have careers, then they don't want to share that information. But when you're students, yeah. Well, yeah, let me tell you everything. It's great. You can get so much information out there, but you just need to be willing to ask. Because they figure, well, they don't have any money and they don't have any experience. And, but yeah, we can do that. We can grow and we can do those things, but you need to be able to ask questions and be willing to, to do that. And, and the last number 10 that I have is to have fun. Enjoy what you do. You know why, you know why so many businesses fail? It's not because they don't have enough money. It's not because the profits aren't good. It's because they start, they start a business and then they get bored. They get tired. They get burned out. They stop doing it. They stop caring. They don't want to come into work as early. They do all these things because they don't have a true passion for what they do and what they enjoy. You need to be able to find something that you have fun with, that you like to go to work. Now, it doesn't have to be playing video games all day. You can, if you're, I'm not an accountant and I don't like accounting and I don't want to be an accountant, but if that really excites you and you like crunching numbers, Great. That's awesome. Find that. Go after that. Do that. But you need to make sure you have that, that excitement for what you're doing. And I think the thing that's exciting about entrepreneurship is that when you start these things, it's kind of like a competition. It's like, can we do better than we did last year? 
Can we do better than our competitors? How are things going? Every day you get like a report card, not in ABCs, but in, but in numbers. And it's really fun to see if you can really enjoy what you do. All right? So those are, those are some of the, the things that, that I thought were really important that you need to remember or that I would suggest that you would do. Now, as, as a student right now, the question is, well, okay, some of you in this room are going to be really interested in business and starting businesses. Great. Some of you aren't, and that's okay. In, in my family, I have some brothers, and if they told me they were going to start a business, I would say, are you serious? Do you really know what you're getting yourself into? You're not the right person to be starting a business. And I think a lot of you are going to know automatically if this is something that you have an aptitude for, if it's something that you like, or if it's just like, you know what? I'm more into underwater basket weaving. <laughs> That's okay. But you need to be able to know if it is for you. And if it is for you, then great. Like I said, when I was in this classroom and I would listen to the lecturers come and speak, oh, man, I just got so excited each time. Every time I left the room, I was like, man, I can't wait to get out there and start something and do something in business. It just, it just was, oh, I loved it. And not everybody's like that, and I understand that, and that's okay. But if it is, if you do feel that, act upon it. Go out, try something, you know? I always say, if you think you want to do something, start something small. Buy a snow cone check. That would be great. Try it. See if you can make, it, make a few dollars or something. After a while, you'll like realize, yeah, okay, I didn't like that. Start trying to sell something. Start your internet business. See if you got what it takes. You don't need to invest a million dollars, but you can try it, and you can see if it's going to work. Also, a lot of people say, oh, well, I want to start a business. Okay, what's your idea? And they tell me the idea. And I said, that's not going to work. Why? Why isn't it going to work? Well, go, just do it like a simple business plan in your head. How much money do you want to make? Okay, how many items do you need to sell? How many are you going to sell a day? How much is your labor going to be? How much is all this? And you can do it really fast. And you can say, well, it's going to work or it's not. So, so as students, just kind of do a quick business plan. Okay, I want to start a... I want to sell trees. Okay. Well, how much does it cost to sell a tree? How many trees do you think I'm going to sell? And you can figure out if it's going to work or not. And you can realize really quickly if your business is going to succeed or if it's not going to succeed. So, so start it now. Just try it. Um, another thing is there's nothing wrong with going out there and getting a job. I, you know what? I think it probably might have been a better strategy for me if I had gone out and worked at a, uh, at a, at a competitor learned something there, figured out if I liked it or not, rather than taking that plunge in the beginning. So go out, get jobs. Go out there, find something that, that does excite you that, you, that you like, get some experience, save some money, and then try and start something like that. That's a great strategy. Nothing, nothing wrong with doing that as well. Um, let's see, some other, some other uh, things that I... Um, that I think are important. One thing that, that a lot of people do, I think, is that they want to they want to get they want to have change in their life. They want to have something different. They want to meet the right person. They want to have the right job. They want to have the right experience. But they're not getting it, and they're like, "Why am I not getting this experience? Or why am I not getting that?" It's because they keep doing the same thing that they've been doing. And so many people do that. If you want to get different results than what you're getting, you've got to do something different. If you're trying to, if you're trying to, to date a girl and it's not working out, maybe you want to try a different strategy. Keep trying until you figure it out. And it's the same thing with business. Same thing. Now, I think a lot of us in this room, I hope, I hope that you've been able to really kind of recognize a lot of the same different themes. I haven't listened to the speakers that have been here, but I would take the guess that some of the topics, some of the themes that I've been able to share are some of the same ones that you hear over and over and over. You know what? 
There's, there's, no, there's no one formula for success in business or entrepreneurship. Everybody has different stuff, but there's some core things that, if you notice, repeat themselves over and over. People that are willing to, to work hard on what they do. People that have integrity in what they do. When they say they're going to do something, they do it. When they promise a customer this, they fulfill that. If you listen to these messages that have been shared throughout this year, you will notice these trends. And if you take this class again, if you go to other fields, you'll be able to notice this. If you want something, surround yourselves with those people that, that have similar things, and then just kind of mirror them. So if, in my case, I wanted to do something in business, and so I started to, to hang around the different entrepreneurs. And after a while, it became very clear to me how they were living their lives, how they were running their business, and how the, the vision that they had. It was, it was very, very apparent. And so take these things, look at these notes as your semester is over, go over them and just kind of step back and then think about them. You know, when, when, uh, when I was on my mission in Florida, you know, I was doing missionary work and was very passionate about that and teaching the people. One of the things my dad said when I go out there, when I was, I was in Utah and going to Florida, he says, go out there and see if there's any great ideas that you see, if there's other businesses. You know, we were proselyting, going around, meeting people, and there was a couple of things that I saw out there. I was like, you know what? That'd be perfect for Provo. That'd be perfect for here. Keep your eyes open. The opportunities are so many. There are just so many opportunities out there. I, I just, when I think about where you guys are, and I wasn't there that long ago, so such a short amount of time ago, and I think about what there's, you can do anything. You can start anything. You don't have to have a lot to do it. Everybody else says, you need money. You need money. You know what? If somebody came to me and they said, you know what? I'm a hard worker, and they showed that they were a hard worker, and they had an idea, and it was starting to work, I'd, I'd give them the money. But you need to be able to kind of think in the right way, to think like, okay, how, why is this person going to give me money? Do I have a compelling case? And if you find those solutions, there's no reason why you can't go out and succeed and do well. And I hope that each one of you will you will really just kind of understand that entrepreneurship is it's a great field. It's wonderful. Why do I like it so much? It gives you the freedom to do whatever you want. Granted, you might work a lot more harder than some people at certain times, but you are able to control the life that you have. You control the people that are in your inner circle and the type of business that you run. And so I would encourage you, if you have that desire, if you want to go out, to go out and do it. Try it. You know? There's nothing wrong with it. Create jobs. Provide for your family. Create an environment where people like to be. If you do those things, you just might make a little bit of money on the side as well to support your life and your family and those things that you need. And so I am very grateful for this opportunity to, to speak to, to all of you here. And I, I wish you the best of success. I, I really hope that there's future leaders in here. I hope that there's people that are going to go out and succeed. I, I love entrepreneurship. I want people to start enterprises. I want people to go out in the community and be leaders, have integrity, go out there and show people that you can do what's right, you can live righteously, and you can help build the kingdom at the same time while, while building these enterprises. I thank you for your time, and I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.